To record audio in Audition, you need to set up your audio hardware within Audition. And to do that, you need to use Preferences. So on the Windows side of things, you go to Edit Preferences. And on the Mac side, you go Adobe Audition Preferences. And here's Preferences down here. And we go right to Audio Hardware. And now I'm going to show you two things that are available inside Windows. I won't be able to show you the Mac side of things, but it's very similar to what's called ASIO. In Windows, you typically have a choice between MME and ASIO for a device class. MME is the sort of consumer level multimedia extensions that uh, Microsoft made a few years ago. And ASIO is the professional side of audio, that's audio stream input output. So we'll start with MME, multimedia extensions. And it depends on your sound card as to what you're going to see here, but in my case, I've got default input, I've got multiple devices that I can use on my input, but I'm going to go with the microphone that I'm working with right now. Multiple output options, including the speakers and SPDIF. I'm going to stick with the speakers. Master clock, basically you just accept the default setting for that to make sure that this coordinates with your hardware. Then down here are really the settings that are worth considering when you're talking about changing things here. Latency is the delay between the input and the output. So if I have a high latency, then I hear my voice in my headset or my speakers after I state something. And the longer the latency, the higher the latency, the longer the delay and the more sort of awkward it is. It really can throw you off to have a long latency. So 200 is not uncomfortable. That's 200 milliseconds, two tenths of a second. That's kind of long. It's a little bit awkward. So you can drop that down. But this is one of those things where you've got to sort of feel it out and see if it's working for you because it's not an exact science. So if I were to change this to 50 and click OK, and then I hear some dropout, I don't hear really smooth audio, then I know that my latency is too fast for my system to keep up. But I can assure you that systems these days are much better able to handle briefer latency, and so I'm going to accept 50, and I know it won't be a problem. Sample rate is also an issue. The higher the sample rate, the harder your machine has to work. So 48,000 is a pretty good midpoint when you're using sample rate for your input on your hardware. But if you really want to go whole hog, you want to go up to 96,000. That really is sufficient to get the highest quality audio input. I mean, you can really go nuts up here, but you know, I think 48,000 is a good, comfortable range to use. But if your system can handle higher, then feel free to go higher. So that's the MME side of things. Let me go to the ASIO side of things. I'll just change to ASIO. And it's saying, whoa, you're going to make some changes here. Do you want to do this? And say, yep, I do. Now, this is the ASIO device class that comes with my sound card, and it immediately opts for the default setting, which is the creative ASIO. If I click down here, you'll see that I've got a Alesis Firewire that's installed on the computer, but because I haven't connected it yet, that's not really an option. If I click that, I'm going to get an error message. And there really aren't many options here. That's just the way the sound card works in this case. I'm limited to a buffer size of 960 samples, which is relatively low. And the buffer size is what determines, in most cases when you're working with ASIO and with core audio on a Mac, that determines the latency as opposed to latency in an MME. So the smaller the buffer size, the better the latency, the briefer the time period between your input and what you hear. But there are settings buttons, or you will see a settings button depending on your card or your interface. And if you click that, in this particular case, it does have a latency option. So I'm going to drop my latency to 20 like that. And that really will minimize the time between when I input some audio and can hear it. So Generally speaking, you don't have a latency option when you've got ASIO, but in this particular case on this card, there is that option. So I'm happy with 20 milliseconds. So now I'm going to plug in my Alesis interface. The Alesis interface has 26 channels. It allows me to route 26 channels to a multi-track session to 26 different tracks if I want to do that. So I'm going to plug that guy in. Now I'm going to show you what happens when I do that. So let me click OK here just to get things kind of cleaned up, and now I'm going to plug that guy in. So bear with me for a second. All right, now it's plugged in, and what happens is Audition immediately says, hey, you just added a device. If I had plugged in a microphone or any other kind of hardware, it's going to pop this little message up and say, you've added a device. Do you want to change your preferences? And if I check this, don't show this alert again, then, you know, this thing won't pop up the next time. But for the purpose of the tutorial, I want to make sure you see that that will happen. And so do I want to change things? You bet. So I'll click yes. That opens up the audio hardware part of the preferences right to it. And now I'm going to change over to the Alesis Fireware. That gives you this little message again. It's going to change your mapping, as they call it. Click yep, that's fine. And so now, if I click on settings, that opens up the Alesis Fireware settings, which is different than the interface you saw with 
the sound card. I'll close that down. This is just my particular system. And here are the buffer sizes. Again, preset, I can't change it. And the sample rate is preset. This is something I need to do within the hardware and then within the Elisa software. So it's stuck at that point at this moment, but I could change that if I were working with the specific Elisa software. And now that I've done this, I want to talk about the channel mapping a little more. Here are the channels that go in for the left and the right. These are the default, and this is the channel one inside the Elisa's machine, inside the Elisa's interface. There's channel two as the default. Then there's outputs as well. I can hear different outputs coming in through the device as opposed to through my speakers. And even though we assign these things by default, inside the multi-track session, I can change them. I can override this. But if I click this little flyout menu, you can see all the various channels that are available inside this particular interface. There are many other interfaces out there besides this one that have multiple channels like this. So I could change it here, but then I could override this inside the multi-track session. So I'm happy with this guy. So that's how you set up your hardware before you can start doing recording here in Audition.